Hello, I want to thank you for joining me and welcome you to our revenue recognition supplement as it relates to software companies. In this presentation, we will go through a couple of different scenarios to help how to identify performance obligations and determine whether or not each good or service is distinct when there are multiple promises in a contract. This will be in accordance with the new revenue recognition standards found in ASC 606 and IFRS 15. My name is Christine Valoras, and I will be taking you through these exercises. I am an audit manager with Citroen Cooperman, which includes advising my clients from various industries, including technology, private equity, and manufacturing and distribution. We are going to walk through an example of a company which we've affectionately called Best Software Inc., who sells software licenses and other related software services. So let's get started. As you learned in the webinar on new accounting standards, the new revenue recognition standards require each company to go through five steps in determining when to recognize revenue. In this example, we will assume the first step, which is identify the contract with the customer was satisfied. We are going to focus our attention on step number two. Step number two under the new revenue standards is identifying the performance obligations. In some cases, there will be contracts that contain multiple promises. As such, we are going to walk through identifying whether goods and services are distinct or not, and thus determine whether goods and services qualify as separate performance obligations. So let's take a look at the facts in case A. Best Software Inc. enters into a contract with a customer in which they transfer a software license, perform some installation work, and provide various software updates and technical support for a two-year period. The company sells each of these goods and services separately. Now, analyzing the installation service, we noted it includes changing the web screen for each type of user. So if you have a sales team or a marketing team or an IT team, you may want this screen to be different for each group. That's what this is explaining. The company notes that the installation service is routinely performed by other entities and does not significantly modify the software. They also note that the software remains functional without the updates and the technical support. So at this point in time, the company now has to assess which goods and services are distinct, if any. So let's say in this case, the company delivers the software first before any of the other goods or services identified in the contract and remains functional without the updates and technical support. So when looking at it now, Best Software determines the customer can benefit from the updates get together with the software license that was transferred at the start of the contract. In this case, the company would conclude that the customer can benefit from each of the goods and services either on their own or together with the other goods and services that are readily available. Now let's take a further look at installation services. Let's remember from the previous slide that the company, although they can integrate the software into the customer system, the installation services do not significantly affect the customer's ability to use and benefit from the software license because they are routine in nature and can be obtained from various alternate procedures. Therefore, the company has determined that the promise to transfer installation services to the customer is also separately identifiable from each of the promises. Let's move on and now take a look at software updates. Again, remember that the company, although they can integrate the software into the customer system, the software remains functional with or without the updates. That means the software updates do not significantly affect the customer's ability to use and benefit from the software license. And that is because the software updates are not necessary to ensure that the software maintains a high level of utility to the customer during the license period. What we have been able to determine is that the company considers none of the promised goods or services will significantly modify or customize one another, and therefore the company is not providing a significant service that is integrating the software and other services into one combined output. Therefore, the goods and services are not highly interdependent or highly interrelated as the company is able to fulfill its promises to transfer the initial software license, independent from its promise to subsequently provide either installation services, software updates, and or technical support. 
So to wrap it all up for this case, on the basis of this assessment, the company identifies four performance obligations in the contract for the following goods or services. One, the software license. Two, an installation service. Three, the software updates. And four, the technical support, because each of them stood alone without needing to benefit from each other. The company at this point in time will now need to determine whether each of the performance obligations for the installation service the software updates and the technical support are satisfied at a point in time or over time. So now that we've walked through case A, I want to take you through case B and change a few of the situations in the scenario and see how that might affect the new revenue recognition for this entity. So here for case B, we're going to assume that the promised goods and services are the same as in case A except that the contract specifies that as part of the installation, installation service, the software will be substantially customized to add significant new functionality that will enable the software to interface with other customized software applications used by the customer. We're also going to note that the customized installation service can be provided by other entities. The company determines that the terms of the contract result in a promise to provide a significant service of integrating the licensed software into an existing software system by performing a customized installation service as specified in the contract. In other words, the company is using the license and the customized installation service as inputs to produce the combined outputs. That is a functional and integrated software system. And this is all specified in the contract. The software will be significantly modified and customized by the installation service. Consequently, the company will determine that the promise to transfer the license in this case is not separately identifiable from the customized installation service. And therefore, the software license and the customized installation service are not distinct from one another. On the basis of the same analysis in case A, the entity concludes that the software updates and technical support, however, are distinct from the other promises in the contract. So in this case, we have identified three performance obligations in the contract for the following goods and services. Software customization, which is comprised of the license to the software and the customized installation service, that will now be one, whereas in case A, it was two. Your second one will be software updates, and your third will be the technical support. The company at this point in time determines whether each performance obligation, as in case A, is satisfied at a point in time or over time to measure progress toward the complete satisfaction of those performance obligations. And in this case, they determine them to be satisfied over time. The company determines that imply, applying those paragraphs to the software customization, the company considers that the customized software to which the customer will have rights is functional intellectual property and that the functionality of the software will not change during the license period as a result of activities that do not transfer a good or service to that customer. So the company is providing a right to use the customized software. Consequently, the software customization performance obligation is then completely satisfied upon completion of the installation service. So the company considers the other specific facts and circumstances of the contract in the context of the guidance and determining whether it should recognize revenue related to the single software customization performance obligation as it performs the customized installation service or at the point in time the customized software is transferred to the customer. So that's kind of step A and step B, right? What's a small change, if you're going to have a customer um, that requires a significant customization, then likely your software and your installation service are, going, are not going to be distinct and therefore categorized as one performance obligation. However, if they stand alone and they do not significantly change the license and the service they're providing, they are likely going to be considered separate performance obligations. Okay, so we've taken you through case A and case B. And now I wanted to walk you through case C, which is going to touch base on reseller rebates. 
in this situation, we're going to apply amounts to help better emphasize what's going on. So the facts that we have in this contract are best software enters into a contract on January 1st with customer A. It's a software distributor to license software at a price of $50,000 per license for product A and $25,000 for post-contract support for product A as well. Additional information found in the contract is if the customer reaches total annual purchases of $2.5 million of license and annual PCS contracts, they can be in any combination, they will receive a 10% cash rebate on total annual purchases. Best Software Inc. expects the customer to reach the $2.5 million purchase target. So additional information found in the contract is that if the customer reaches total annual purchases of $2.5 million of license and annual PCS contracts, however, they can be in any combination, they will receive a 10% cash rebate on total annual purchases. Best Software Inc. is going to take the assumption that they expect the customer to reach the $2.5 million purchase target in this situation. So on January 31st, customer A places an order to purchase five licenses of product A and an annual PCS contract for those five licenses. So as you can see, the license agreement total for five purchases of those licenses would be $250,000 plus the five PCS purchases of $125,000. So the total order amounts to $375,000. On January 31st. Let's assume that the management has concluded the order meets the definition of a contract, which is step one, and that the license of the product A and the annual PCS contract are separate performance obligations. So how will this rebate impact the transaction price? The analysis shows that payments to the customer are considered a reduction of the transaction price unless the payment is in exchange for a distinct good or service. See how the rebate will impact the transaction price. Payments to customers are considered a reduction of the transaction price unless the payment is in exchange for a distinct good or service. In this case, there is not a distinct good or service being provided by the customer. Therefore, the estimated transaction price should be reduced by the expected rebate. As discussed in step four of the five step revenue recognition standard, the expected rebate should then be allocated to all of the performance obligations in the arrangement based on their relative standalone selling prices. In this case, the rebate amounted to $37,500. To allocate it in accordance with their relative standalone selling prices, $25,000 would be allocated to the software license and $12,500 to the PCS revenue. However, in certain situations, it may be appropriate to allocate the expected rebate to only one or more performance obligations in the arrangement, rather than to all performance obligations. It'll be based on the specific criteria for al allocating variable considerations and whether or not those are met. So that takes me to the end of our scenarios. I have walked you through uh, three different situations. I hope you all have found it very helpful, and I want to thank you again for taking the time to walk through these with me. Thank you.